was working offshore near Santa Barbara, and I was beginning to have fun. Using the scooter was like flying. The scooter was buoyant, driven by a battery-powered propeller, and I controlled it by the two side handles. Speed ranged from four to nine knots, and maneuverability was unlimited. It was designed to make a skin diver's life happy. Some of the local residents caught on, and I was treated to a first-class underwater acrobatic circus. Then a giant manta ray got into the act. Took one look at me and left under full steam. It reminded me, I better be about my business too. So I headed for the surface. I broke through the water's surface and gave a small swimmer the scare of his life. He wasn't waiting for explanations, so I followed him into shore. I didn't know then that this little scare would soon turn into heartbreaking terror. I figured I owed them an apology for scaring the boy. I must have looked like I'd just dropped off a flying saucer to him. My name's Mike Nelson. Sorry that I uh, scared your boy like that. I didn't expect to come across a swimmer way out there. Well, that's not much of an excuse for playing with that with that toy of yours, and they're a public beach at that. I said I was sorry. But you know, uh, swimmers aren't allowed that far out. Especially when they're young. See, darling, I told you it was dangerous. Mr. Nelson, I'm Rena Crane. This is my husband, Dave, my daughter, Karen, and my son, Davey. Hi, kids. I can swim there and back, too. You can, huh? They do that very often? Swim all the way out there and back? Sure thing. They swim at least a mile every day. These kids can go. We're going to win the Olympics. At least I am. What do you mean I'm a better swimmer than you are? I'm a boy and boys can swim better than girls, huh, Dad? You're both champs. Remember that. A lot of riptides out there. I've been training these two since they were a year old. I know all about riptides. Dave. I'm sorry, Mr. Nelson. No, he's right. It's none of my business. Oh, it's nice meeting you folks. I see you kids in the uh, 1968 Olympics, huh? Bye. Bye. This was a rocky coast. Dangerous for anybody. It certainly was no place to let kids play. I see you met Dave Crane. Yeah. You know him? Oh, yeah. Hey, what's, uh, what's eating him, anyway? Oh, Dave's not a bad guy. He used to be a kid football whiz. You know, guaranteed to make All-American. Not so? Well, he busted a leg his freshman year. He never played again. I guess he figures his kids can make up for what he missed. Yeah, I'm afraid that's just about it. Can we go exploring now, Daddy? Where, darling? Just off by the play, Mom. There's a bunch of pirate caves there. No, I don't want you to go out there alone. Well, nonsense, Reno. You have to teach them self-reliance. You kids can go. Thanks, oh, Dad! Great kids, both of them. Champs. You're pushing them too hard, Dave. They're too little to go out there by themselves. My kids will be okay. The kids took off alone. Right into strong currents and a rugged, rocky coastline. The area wasn't safe. 
even for experts. I didn't know whether Dave Crane was stubborn or foolish, or both. Caves are wonderful places for kids, full of excitement and mystery. What these kids didn't realize was that sometimes excitement can lead to danger. Rena Crane was beginning to get nervous. Maybe her husband was raising two Olympic athletes, but to her, they were still just children. I can't see him. Relax, honey, they'll be back. Time was passing, and the tides were rising. The kids were too busy to watch their paddleboard or to notice the water coming in. Look! It's probably from a pirate ship! Probably from an orange crate. Orange crate from a pirate ship! We better be going soon. And we're not caring. But the water's starting to come in a little. Look at this! The waves were higher and harder. The paddleboard began to slip, to move. Then the water caught it and washed it out of the cave. I don't care what you think, I'm going to get the lifeguard. Maybe he can get... Rena! Now don't be silly, I'll go after him myself. Well, hurry then, hurry, will you? I'm really worried. Now relax, I'll have him back in 20 minutes. Now even Dave Crane was worried, but his worry came late, possibly too late. frantically. They were nearby. But where? If you'd have been watching the power board when you slowed your way, I was digging. That's a fine excuse. Now we have to swim out. Maybe we better wait until someone comes for us. Yes, maybe. It's getting kind of rough. My husband's been gone for over half an hour. I know something must have happened. The children... Now, Mrs. Are... Crane, relax. I'm sure Dave found the children right away, and they're just taking their time getting back. But I'll drive out to the point and have a look. Can I go with you, sure, please? Sure, sure. Hop in. You heard? Yeah. I didn't want her to know, but last year a party of college kids went exploring in those caves. They got caught by the tide. Three of them drowned. No. How soon does the tide turn up at the point? It turned ten minutes ago. I better take my scooter. Come on, give me a hand with this stuff. Up here. The kids suddenly began to realize that they were in trouble. We got the scooter loaded and took off. It was 2.45, the tide was coming in, which meant rough water. But with the scooter, 
I'd be able to do a lot of things that a man swimming couldn't. And I'd do them faster, too. The time was 2.56. The tide was visibly higher. I knew this area pretty well. There were a dozen places two adventurous kids could get to and get into trouble. A few minutes after three, I spotted Dave Crane. He was sitting on his paddleboard, helplessly looking around for a miracle. I headed for him. Where'd you find the paddleboard? Over by that rock. It must be one of those four caves. You stay here in case I need you. How about take a look? Don't tell me what to do. I can take care of myself and my kids. I couldn't talk to him. He was angry and scared. And I made him do something stupid. He dove for the caves. I tried to stop him, but he was still being stubborn. have enough air, but he went into the first cave. As soon as he entered, a vicious moray eel struck, a jaw like a vice, and two rows of needle-sharp teeth. I managed to cut the eel loose, and I started to haul Dave up to the surface. Dave would be okay, but it was ten after three. I could feel the force of the incoming tide as time ran out. taking me precious time to drag Dave Crane out, even with the lifeguard's help. <laughs> Take care of that in the hand now, huh? And you got him. But Mr. Nelson, the children, where are they? They've got to be in one of those four caves. Now, don't worry, Mrs. Crane, I'll find them. Oh, please, Mr. Nelson, Believe please. me, I'll find them. It was 3.10, and I was just beginning to search for the kids. I knew there were three other caves besides the one that we'd been in. But I didn't have the slightest idea which one held the two kids. I reached the area of the caves by a quarter after three. I was moving as fast as I could and praying that it was fast enough. The kids were being forced up and back on a ledge at the rear of the cave. The water was pouring in, rising relentlessly. When the tide reached its height, the cave would be completely filled. An underwater death trap.
about this one? It was too shallow. Only room enough for small fish. look at the second cave, I ruled that one out too. It was full of undisturbed marine life. This was it, the last cave. They had to be in here, or my search was hopeless. It was almost 3.30, almost high tide. I think I was praying as I headed inside. Too late. I can feel it. Too late. Don't say that, Mrs. Crane. Mike will get them. He promised and he'll keep his promise. I surfaced inside the cave, and there still was a surface, and air. This had to be the one. It's Daddy! Hi, kids! No, it's Mr. Nelson! Where's my dad? Well, we've both been looking for you. I was just lucky. I happened to find the right cave first. But if I hadn't, he sure would have. Yeah, I know that. All right, now listen, kids. I'm going to have to swim out the water with you in order to get you out of here. You're going to use my diving lung, you understand? But I've only got one. I can only take one of you out at a time. Will you go first. He's right, sweetheart. Brady's first. Come on over here now, please. Now listen, darling. Come on. Quickly. That's it, sweetheart. Here. Now you put this mouthpiece in your mouth, huh? Now, suck in and out. Like that. Not too hard. That's fine, sweetheart. That's right. And if you get any water in your mouth, when you get in the water there, you blow hard on it like this. Like that, huh? You got it, sweetheart? Yep. Okay. Remember now, you can't breathe through your nose. Just your mouth. I'll be back by the time you count 150, okay? Okay. All right, big boy. We're going to hold tight. Here we go. Hey! I had two face masks, but only one diving lung.
cranes weren't half as scared as I was. The breakers covered up the entrance of the cave, hiding it. I knew which cave to head for, but now that race against time, against the deadly tide, was reaching the finishing line. I wasn't sure that Davy could last 150 seconds. I surfaced. I couldn't see Davy. I was frantic. Hey! I dove through foam and breaking water. And I got lucky. I caught him around the middle, at the end of the rocky ledge. Towel for you, son. Gee, Dad, what happened to your hands? Huh? Oh, Anil, thank God you're all right. Sir, I'm all right. I was only scared a little bit when that big wave filled the cave. Mr. Nelson said if he hadn't found his you sure would have. I wasn't as scared. It was just it was so dark down there. What's the matter, Daddy? Don't worry, Dad. We're okay. We'll win the Olympics, just like you said. I promise. Me too. No. No. No more training. Now listen, both of you. We've worked hard enough. You tell me, both of you, what you want to do. Dave. Anything. The movies, the circus. Karen, you wanted a bike. And Davy, that model train kit. No kidding? No, Davy. No kidding. Your dad's not kidding at all. Listen to that. Those kids are going to be spoiled rotten now. Crane can afford to go overboard a little. Now that he stopped being a coach and started being a father. Hello there. I'm Lloyd Bridges. You know, three-fifths of the world is covered by the sea. And how little most of us know about that underwater world. Go below with us again next week, huh? For another thrilling adventure in Sea Hunt.